Our world desperately lacks courageous leaders like Winston Churchill. Discover the only place where you can find courageous leaders today. Next, on The Key of David with Gerald Flurry. Greetings, everyone. Britain reached the worst crisis ever in World War II. It came uh, down really to two men who were about to lead Britain in that war effort and lead their country. The Prime Minister at the time, Neville Chamberlain, had been uh, really pressured to resign. The people wanted him out, but he and the King had a lot to say about who was going to be the next leader, and they chose Lord Halifax to be the leader of Britain at that time. And the Parliament just simply would not hear of that, and they said they would only accept Winston Churchill. So this is how close we came to losing World War II, because at that time Churchill was the only person left that stood in Hitler's way. Nobody else did. And here's what Hitler said at the time, the war is finished, I'll come to an understanding with England. And then uh, on May 28th, this is from William Manchester, the first day of the Dunkirk evacuation, Halifax, speaking for the conservative leadership, had told Churchill that a negotiated peace was England's only alternative. In other words, the only thing we can do is surrender and try to get the best deal out of it we possibly can. But it was surrendering nevertheless. But here's what Churchill said, We shall go on and we shall fight it out here or elsewhere, and if at last the long story is to end, it were better it should end not through surrender, but only when we are rolling senseless on the ground. Now, the one great fear at that time was of Adolf Hitler. But there was one man in Britain that didn't fear Hitler and that had courageous leadership. We uh, need always to have strong courage. Some historians will uh, tell you that he saved Western civilization. But again, you see, Britain came that close to losing World War II. And who, who knows what would have happened to America and Russia? They weren't prepared for war at that time, just as Britain wasn't, frankly. They had a, a puny military because their country hadn't, uh, their leaders hadn't uh, tried to keep up with Germany's uh, armaments and uh, their warfare. So there are a few news commentators today who would say, well, we've sort of reached the crisis at the close, as the Moffat translation calls it. They believe that we're facing some imminent explosion in the world. Now that's talked about quite a bit, because we do see a lot of problems in this world. And uh, what, what, is, uh, what is the problem? Isaiah the prophet prophesied of something quite similar to this in his book. And he said the problem with the people today in his prophecy is that they want smooth things and even deceit rather than the truth. They, didn't, they couldn't face the truth, but it is only the truth that will set us free and solve our problems. It is by nature a spiritual problem, not some uh, carnal warfare that, uh, that would be something altogether different. But I want to talk to you about God's courageous leaders today. Isaiah Berlin said that uh, Churchill was the largest human being of our time, but even Winston Churchill could not save us today. It's a bigger problem than that, and man cannot solve it. Notice Acts 3 and verse 20, And he shall send Jesus Christ, which before was preached unto you, whom the heaven must receive until the times of restitution of all things, or the restoring of all things, 
which God has spoken by the mouth of all His holy prophets since the world began." Well, this is talking about the second coming of Jesus Christ. And all prophets have told about this trouble in the end time, and Jesus Christ having to solve the problem, come and save us from ourselves. Matthew 24, verses 21-22, he, he personally told us that when He was on this earth. We cannot solve these problems, but there is a solution. There is tremendous hope, physically and spiritually. Verse 24 says, Yea, and all the prophets from Samuel and those that follow after, as many as have spoken, have likewise foretold of these days. All those prophets have prophesied of these very days. The question here is, are we going to heed God's warning and all those prophecies from those prophets in the Old and the New Testament, or in the Hebrew Bible and the New Testament? These are prophecies that you can prove. If you look at uh, most Bible scholars, when they look at the, the uh, former prophets, they say, well, that's, that's just history. But you have to remember that these prophecies were written by prophets, and prophets prophesy. That's what it's all about, and that's, there's duality in those prophecies throughout the Bible. And there's duality that I want to show you about today as well. But I'll tell you this, it's, it's, it's just deadly dangerous when people reason that way, when we all ought to see that these prophecies, the former prophets I'm talking about right now, are primarily for this end time, not just the past history and that's it. It's actually has become prophecy for us today. The book of Joshua is one of the former prophets, and it is duality. What Joshua went through anciently was only a type of what is happening to us today and what is going to happen to us. Today it's aimed at spiritual Israel. Anciently it was aimed at Israel when they did not have God's Holy Spirit. It was a totally different situation. But God is preparing His people today, spiritual Israel, to prepare themselves to help Jesus Christ rule this earth on David's throne forever. God is preparing His people to do that. But here's just a mind-shaking truth, I think, and and it's awesome when you understand it and what Joshua is all about. Joshua was about to enter into the Promised Land, but that's only a type of the Kingdom of God. We today, as spiritual Israel, are about to enter into the Promised Land of, of the Kingdom of God, or eternal life forever, and it is imminent. That wonderful world tomorrow is very, very close to being here on this earth. So the very elect are preparing to rule. We do need rulers in this world. Surely we all can see that. The rulers that we have are not qualified to rule this world. They're far from it, and they're very destructive in just about everything they do. But again, I believe Joshua has one of the most important introductions in all the Bible. When you realize what it's telling you, Joshua said, well, now this is an entrance into the Promised Land, physically in his time of, of Israel, although he was, certainly had God's Holy Spirit, but the people didn't. And certainly uh, courage is essential for leaders if they're ever going to be very successful. Winston Churchill said 
He believed that courage was the greatest strength that you could ever have, because if you didn't have courage, all of your other virtues would be ineffective. You have to have strength and courage to win the battle that God has given us all to, to fight, whether we're with God's Holy Spirit or without. Joshua begins this way, Now after the death of Moses, the servant of the Lord, it came to pass that the Lord spoke unto Joshua, the son of Nun, Moses' minister, saying, Moses, my servant, is dead. Now therefore arise, and go over this Jordan, and you and all this people into the land which I do give to them, even to the children of Israel. And then verse 5 says, There shall not any man be able to stand before you all the days of your life, as I was with Moses, so I will be with you. God is telling this to the people. I will not fail you, nor forsake you. So what is He telling them to do? What must they do to enter the Promised Land in that time? And what do we need to do in this end time to fulfill this prophecy? Verse 6 says, Be strong and of good courage. That's number one. And he talked about dividing the, the land. And then verse 7 says, Only be you strong and very courageous. Very courageous. Number two, he's talking about being very courageous. And he says, If you do this, you will prosper wherever you go. You'll prosper and you'll succeed. And he's talking to us physically and spiritually. It's just a it's duality. It's only a type of what God is doing today in His church, spiritual Israel. Notice, well, he told them to have this Pentateuch in their mouth, and uh, which was called the Law. And here's what he said in verse nine: Have not I commanded you, be strong and of good courage. Be not afraid. Neither be you dismayed, for the Eternal your God is with you wherever you go." They did not have the Holy Spirit. The people didn't. But Joshua was making it clear that God was behind them, and they could not lose if they would heed what He said. Now they failed in the end. But how about today, spiritually? He says, don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. So if you're going to have courage, you're going to have to conquer your fears. And you certainly can do it, especially with the help of God. You, uh, that, that's the only kind of courage that will really get you through everything, is God's own courage. And He says He will empower you with that courage, and nothing will stand in your way. That's a, that's a phenomenal prophecy for us today. And I don't care when, what people say about it, about that being only history. It's so easy to prove that it's far more than that. It is prophecy for this end time primarily. And oh, how we need to understand that today. These great men of God really uh, had that kind of courage and, and uh, trusted God. We desperately need courage, and the way to build courage is to face your fears and overcome them, and you can do that. Certainly you can do it with God in a, in a lasting way, a courage that will last forever. So Joshua was about to go into the Promised Land, and he, he was getting all of them together, and the leaders and everybody, and telling them that, well, look, you, you, we, we have to have courage to be able to do this. And, we, and he was a leader with strong courage. God's leader always has that strong courage. And we're going to rule forever for doing that if we're loyal to God. But he says his wife has made herself ready. Now notice uh, Isaiah 3 and verse 1. For behold, the eternal Lord of hosts does take away from Jerusalem and from Judah the stay and the staff, 
the whole stay of bread and the whole stay of water. The mighty man, here's something he's taken away from Israel, and that certainly includes America and Britain and the Jewish state. Those are the states primarily God is aiming this prophecy at. They are the birthright nations and the scepter nation, and they should be doing exceptional things for God. But anyhow, he's taken away the mighty man and the man of war, the judge and the prophet and the prudent and the ancient, the captain of fifty, and so on. And verse 4 I will give children to be their princes, and babes shall rule over them. And the people shall be oppressed, every one by another, and every one by his neighbor. The child shall behave himself proudly against the ancient, and the base against the honorable. See, that just leads you in a state of anarchy if you don't have that. That's, that's what we face so often today. There are two tiny few today who still have courage, but it's limited if they don't have God's power and God's Spirit. But here is something that is very monumental that we have to learn. We have to have courage or all of our other virtues probably won't be effective at all. That's what we're facing, and you can prove every bit of that. Tocqueville, the French historian, said that in democratic times the historians would not realize and factor in the fact that great men come along and the history doesn't work out the way it normally would if you just let things flow and have no real leadership there. You have to have real leadership, strong leadership, who will, a man who will dominate events with the power he has. Now, that's the big flaw of democracy, and we see that happening today in many ways. Here's what Queen Victoria said when Britain was becoming the greatest empire ever on this earth. She said to the leaders that if we are to maintain our position as a first-rate power, we must, with our Indian Empire and large colonies, be prepared for attacks and wars somewhat or other continually. If you're going to be a great empire, you're going to have those wars continually. And if you're God's church reaching out to the world, you're going to have, you're going to have uh, wars of some kind continually. If you're spiritual, God makes sure that you have wars to build His character within you. We have trials and tests, but we have rewards that just shatter the mind. <laughs> They're so great. So we have had. God's people turn away in this end time. Ninety-five percent of them have turned away from God. Well, I'll just paraphrase a few scriptures from Jeremiah. Jeremiah 30 and verse 24, it says, In the latter days you shall consider it. All these things are going to be fulfilled, he said. In verse 24 of Jeremiah 30, you shall consider it means understand it thoroughly. We're going to understand it today. Do you understand and do I understand these prophecies in this end time? If you go back to the beginning of Jeremiah 30, God told him to write this message of His in a book. It's dual. He went to Judah anciently, but God said, I want you to write it in a book because it's going to be to all Israel. And you can see that in our booklet on Jeremiah. And verse 9 goes on to talk about David is going to be resurrected to rule over Israel. That's the, the imminent return of Jesus Christ and what is going to happen. Amazing resurrections that God has prophesied to us. And he, but he went on to say, There is a voice of, of, of danger. If you just overlook it, there will be problems. But he said in verse 8, Don't be afraid. Overcome the fear. And he goes on to talk about we have to build and plant. And then he talks about the seething pot in verse 13, the real problems that are going to be coming. But here's what he says to all of us. You therefore gird up your loins and arise and speak unto them all that I command you. 
Be not dismayed at their faces, lest I confound you before them." This is Jeremiah 1 and verse 17. He says, he says Now don't, don't be confounded by them, and don't be afraid of them. Verse 18, he says, I've made you this day a defense city, an iron pillar. Can you believe that? Can you believe God? I have made you. He's already given it to you, to God's people. It's a promise from God. And you'll be brazen walls against the whole land, against the kings and so on, and the princes, and all of those people. That's the kind of power God says He will give us. And He says, They will fight against you, but you shall prevail against them. Verse 19, that's what it says. And He will deliver you, because He says, I am with you. But you see, we, we can't just ask for smooth things. We have to face facts. We have to face the truth, or we can never, ever get help from God. I'll just read you a verse from Ezekiel 33 and verse 11. Here is the solution, you see. Say unto them, As I live, says the Eternal God, I have no pleasure in the death of the wicked, but that the wicked turn from his way, and live, and turn you, turn you from your evil ways. For why will you die, O house of Israel? See, He doesn't want us to have that kind of a problem. He wants to turn turn, turn, he used it three times, turn to God and get away from your evil ways. Look, that, that, that applies to us to, to begin to be converted, but it has to be a way of life for all of us. We have to turn away of those evil deeds or the sins of this world. And it's, it's a way of life. God says, we desperately need to pay attention to this in this end time. And then he says in verse 33, says, And when this comes to pass, they, they hear, but they won't do it. And he said, Well, when this comes to pass, and lo, it will come, then shall they know that a prophet has been among them. Verse 33, there's going to be God's message. There was a prophet, the end time type of Elijah. Matthew 17. Verses 10 and 11, you can read about that. And he was right, our booklet about Herbert W. Armstrong, and also how to be an overcomer, and, and even Germany and the Holy Roman Empire. But you, we've got to be prepared for war. Douglas MacArthur said, Look, if you take generals and leaders like that in, in the peacetime, so often when you put them into war, they falter. They don't have this strong courage that a leader must have. They just simply don't have it. And what you're looking for is people who, in that battle, that they win battles. That's what you're looking for. So God, when He, he brings His people out, He puts them into war, a spiritual war, so they will win wars, and, be, and that's how you build the character of courage in you by doing just that. Until next week, this is Gerald Flurry. Goodbye, friends. All our literature is available free of charge at no cost or obligation to you. Request Winston S. Churchill, The Watchman, We Have Had Our Last Chance, and Isaiah's End Time Vision. Order now. The preceding program was a paid presentation of The Key of David, brought to you by the Philadelphia Church of God.